Uh, hello, uh, my name's Trevor Burton. Uh, I'm a Flash developer and consultant based in the UK. And as Rob said, we're going to talk. Um, it's actually got me up there as PaperVision 3D clientless virtuality. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, Flash itself as a platform. I'm assuming everybody here knows what Flash is. We're all experiencing show of hands. Who knows what Flash is? Excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, just talk about what Flash is and um, this current state of the art with real time 3D uh, in the browser. And then a little bit about uh, the current uh, project that I'm involved in called Paper World, which is what Rob was talking about, um, a virtual world in Flash in the browser. Um, and I apologize in advance for the state of these slides. I put them together in like five minutes um, earlier on because I've actually come to Amsterdam uh, for a Flash development conference which finished yesterday. And um, so I'm a little bit tired, so I apologize. And I had to throw these together quite quickly. So you just have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I wanted to just talk briefly about why Flash, why now, um, then a little bit about PaperVision 3D and Away 3D, which are the two main real-time 3D um, engines, libraries at the moment, and then about Paperworld. Uh, so these are the advantages and the disadvantages of using Flash. Um, they are basically the same thing. Uh, the, the most important element of, uh, about Flash uh, is ubiquity, the fact that it just works everywhere on any platform, more or less. And Adobe, who make Flash, this is one of their main um, aims. But it's, it's an advantage in that you don't need to install anything. It will just It's in most people's web browser as it is. But it's also a disadvantage in that you don't know what it's playing on. So you don't know what it's actually going to look like, what speed it's going to play at in a, uh, in a user's browser. Um, speed, speed is advancing, but speed isn't actually that great. So it's, it's, um, it's incredibly slow compared to Java, C++. Um, it has a huge user base. Um, millions of people know how to use Flash, even just a little bit. Uh, but there's a, a wide range of users of Flash. There are people who just tinker a little bit, designers, and there are serious developers. Um, so you, when you're aiming something at a Flash developer, it needs to be aimed towards the, the, the lower end to make sure everybody can understand it. And there are a, vi a massive variety of development styles because there is no real fundamental way to learn how to use Flash. And, and move on. So there's, there's such a wide range that it can be difficult to build something for the Flash developer. Uh, so PaperVision 3D and Away 3D are the two main engines. They're both software-based, um, so there's nothing actually in the player, nothing in the client. You have to write everything yourself. Uh, they're popular, easy to learn, easy to use, again, because they're aimed at the lower end of the market. And the rule of thumb really is for, for quality and performance wise, if it works on the PlayStation 1, you can do it in Flash. So that's the sort of standard that you can get to. Um, you can supersede it in certain cases, but it's just a rule of thumb. Um, and they're both open source, which means they have continuous community development. They've always been worked on and they've been worked in production uh, games, websites, etc. Uh, and they have a lot of community support, both of them. So Paperworld uh, is a multi-user client server framework. Um, it's basically a set of tools that allow you as um, someone who knows a little bit about Flash to create your own virtual world, um, to create your own game, a multi-user application, a collaborative environment, basically whatever you want to do. It allows you to do that and do it as quickly as possible. You can scaffold or framework something very, very quickly. Um, and if you want to build a huge, huge game with masses of development, you can do that. But you can do everything and you can do it very, very quickly. Uh, it's developed with games in mind um, purely because 
I like developing games, and that's what I do for a living most of the time. So that's what it. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a game. Um, and there are two models to it. Uh, I want to get too technical, um, but um, you can really have two. In, in multiplayer games, there are two real um, approaches, or really, there's only one that's actually used. Uh, where you have strong ownership of a model. So if you imagine you're playing your first-person shooter game, you own that avatar. You are that avatar that's moving through the world, and you interact to a certain extent. But um, you don't tend to see uh, the collaborative model, where if it, which would be if you imagine a, a stack of blocks and different users are pushing and pulling on the same block. Um, you don't tend to see that because of network and latency issues and whatnot. But we're looking at solving those problems as well. Um, and Paperworld is open source. It will be released, um, hopefully, the first half of April. So you'd actually be able to just go to Google Code or whatever and just download it, uh, play the demo, uh, get it run and set up, and, and play away with it, basically, if you know anything about Flash. Um, and I have raced through that, so I apologise, but like I said, I've, I'm a little bit spaced out. So, um, uh, yeah, that's basically Paper World. There, there, there is no, uh, there are very many multiplayer games and multiplayer applications in Flash, but there's, there's nothing currently that is real time and 3D. Um, and the, just the benefit of Flash is that you can play it directly in the browser. Like, as Rob was saying, it's clientless. You don't need to download and install something. It's 99% of the time, it's there in the user's browser. Um, it allows you to cache everything in the browser. So once you've been to a site and played it once, you have to wait for the download. The next time you go, it's cached. It's in your browser. You don't need to, to, to re-download anything. You can force updates. Uh, there's a nice little trick where you can update one element by changing the file name, you can force that to be updated. So you can keep a user up to date with everything without having them download a huge patch release or and reinstall anything. Or you, know, you don't have to worry about platforms. Um, there is only one platform, the Flash platform. So um, it's just um, it's a benefit. But there are a lot of technical reasons why it's not been done before, and. Um, we're starting to overcome them, so hopefully we can actually do something exciting with Flash, or even more exciting, because Flash is so exciting. Uh, yeah. So, this is a little bit primitive. If we go in here, Microsoft. So here we're connecting to um, a, a server running locally on this machine. So again, simple models. Uh, there's probably, I think there's less than a thousand polygons on the screen at the moment. Um, if we just show you they're actually flying around. Um, and here we can see the versions that are coming from the server and the user input. The, the, the textured model is what the player sees, and what you see in the red and um, yellow models are basically used to interpolate between uh, the server and where you actually are. So the red version is what the server is saying. Uh, if you think of it like that. If we restart that. So I'm trying to arrange the screen so you can just about see. So this um, this represents two different uh, models, two different clients, two different people playing the same game at the same time. 
looks like we just lost it. Let's try once more. Like I said, this is very, very primitive, and I apologize. But I think it's that, uh, Trevor, there isn't anything else like this that's been made, is there? Uh, no, there's, there's people working on these problems, but this is really the first time that you, you've been able to do this. So there we can see we're flying around. Uh, you get the idea, sorry. Yeah, no, that's great. So uh, we have a, a, a development server. We've been funded by a, a, an American company who are uh, basically paying for the development and also for it to be completely released. So we're hoping that in the next few weeks we can tidy everything up and get it out there for people to play with and make it a lot more easy to experiment with, um, with this sort of technology. Uh, we're not looking to take over Second Life or create a Second Life client in Flash. Uh, this is purely aimed at, at the moment at, at, at Flash developers and games developers, but hopefully we can you know, get more people interested in doing nice, simple things quickly. Um, when when it, do you really. think a, a game would be available? Like, when would there be a, a, a first uh, real incarnation where somebody could go online and, and play something? Well, along with the release of the framework and the code, uh, we, we're we running, like, a, a, a sister game, and hopefully there'll be a little bit of cross-pollination between the two as you develop the framework. We put all the features in the game. As the game develops, we put those back into the framework, and everything goes back out to the community. So, again, during April, uh, there'll be... A, an instance of the game. Right, the very first one, pretty much the first... Uh, yeah, yeah, the first, first multiplayer, real-time 3D in Flash, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be quite a mark, I think, because I can see that as that develops, more and more people will want to become involved. There's also the advantage, I guess, that other people, because there's so much content already for Flash and people can come into it, it can be applied, right? I mean, people uh, will be yeah, able to create a lot of things on their own. It's not... Uh, it's. The idea is that if you're just a designer, you can design a ship or you can design a missile, you can design a skin. If you, can, you can then add that to the game. So you don't necessarily need to know how to program in an object-orientated way. You can, you can make a difference straight away. Or you can work with a team um, and have people with different specialities working in a proper workflow to create a, a production game or production application, whatever you want. Uh, questions. Any questions? Comments? Hello. Hi, um, Adrian Wormger from uh, Force Labs. Um, I was just wondering, to what extent is this different than what you could achieve in, in sort of multi-client interconnectivity with the, um, the the Adobe Flash Media servers? Um, it's it's. Built, the, the server side is built on a, an application called Red5. I don't know if you've heard of Red5. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's basically a port to Java of Flash Media Server. Um, so you could do it in F FMS, absolutely. Um, it's just that the, the people we're working with are Red5. Right. So we just write in that, and I, I write Java as well, so it just made a, a nice fit. Um, but it's just about solving the problems of working over TCP with the RTMP protocol. The fact that normally a game would be UDP and you, it, you've got the extra lag and latency and overhead of ensuring packets are delivered and mm. ordered and whatnot. So it's it's exactly the same. Basically, you could write a quick FMS application. The server at the moment is frighteningly simple. Mm. It's just all about the way the client handles latency and timing. So, so you're saying that the difference between, like for instance, if you use the Flash Media Server or Red Five for some single client or limited multi-client interconnectivity that the, the main difference in that now you're making it f game friendly. Exactly, yeah, we, we're handling it, um, handling the 3D in real time and just connecting it to something that, that, that can handle the interpolation of that um, quickly enough on the client and get the messages back and forth. And, and it's, it's a pretty standard um, multiplayer game model on the server. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just about handling that information over that particular protocol, which is Flash can't handle UDP without running in a wrapper, which takes you out the browser and makes you install something or download something, which is one of our stated aims at the moment. 
Mm. We might bring it in later because it, then it allows you to use the Wemo and custom input devices. But is there not al also the ability, if you use that, to use a, a P2P distribution method? Could you not also incorporate? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could you could do that because Flash won't Flash won't allow you to receive an input coming connection to a Flash player client. You have to request it. So currently, yeah, you won't be able to P2P it, but you might be if you had a C wrapper or screen weaver or, or something like that. Maybe yeah. What about in terms of education? I mean, how could you? How might you apply this? Uh, I know in general. It's just another virtual environment, or not just, but a virtual environment. How, might, how do you perceive it? I mean, you, we talked before about uh, education. What do you think that you might, uh, might be useful for, specifically? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's really up to the user. This is why we're, we're releasing everything free and just, just to making it as easy as possible for you to play with and, and adapt and do what you want and develop something that you, you yourselves, Edgiverse, would want to do or or because it's just simply linking lots of clients together and clients, we're looking at numbers in the hundreds uh, for a particular instance of the server. So yeah, it's just uh, anything, really games, uh, educational games, collaborative play or uh, anything really. What do you think would have to change on the, let's say on the Adobe side, how could o Adobe help to support this? What would they have to do to make it? Uh um, well, we're, we're currently at Flash 9 and uh, Flash 10 will take a lot of the, the libraries, the, th the, uh, the mathematics of the library out of the um, action script and into the player itself. It works at a much lower level, so it'll speed up um, considerably uh, the, the, the level of 3D we can get in there, the number of polygons. Um, there's an issue there about painting to the screen. It doesn't make that any faster. Um, so if you have lots of models with detailed textures, you, you can't really get away with that. But you can make the environment a lot more interesting and just have it at a higher frame rate. Uh, but they're, they're, they're very slowly starting to, to catch on that 3D is really the way to go. And um, yeah, we, we, they're being pressured from all fronts, but they're a large organization, so it Could takes you time. Could you maybe show a couple of uh, websites that uh, that you know of that uh, maybe Carlos or uh, or some of the other ones that you know that are using Paper Vision very well? Is there something at Red Five? Um, Somebody, some link that might uh, might actually display uh, more clearly what uh, what the capabilities are. Uh, well, I don't know. Is, yeah, there, there is. I would probably it would probably be best to put them out later onto the onto the, the, the website or whatever or through the second life. We've put some lists of no, links up. No, I just was thinking of something that you, you might have known. Yeah, there, there really isn't anything in particular. We've, we can put the blog up for paper vision. You can see what's, what it's okay. capable of. Yeah. Oh. Something that warns me, if you think about uh, uh, the environment of Flash, how do you bootstrap this in terms of content? Second Life has the benefit of having an enormous amount of content generated by the users in crowdsource but I don't see the same happening in Flash because nobody has IP rights. You can't enforce your IP rights. You can't. There is no in, uh, incentive to create objects or content for Flash, apart from volunteering, of course. Uh, sorry, I, d I don't understand what you mean. There's no incentive to create content. Well, of course, there are volunteers who would like to create content for an environment such as this uh, paper world. But the big incentive in Second Life is you have IP rights on your creations. Okay, but the, the, the point is that the, the, the game we're writing, and, and this is just purely an example of what you can do with the framework. So the idea is that you wouldn't be creating necessarily creating content for the game we're creating. You would take the framework and build your own game or build your own application, do whatever you want with it, basically. You're so just you would build your road. own customized application. Yes. You're showing the road to other people. Sorry? You're showing the road to other people. Well, yeah, yeah. It's just giving someone the tools to do it who wouldn't be able to write this sort of thing themselves with a less experienced programmer or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. More questions? Think so? Okay. Trevor, okay. thanks a lot. Thanks Thank very you much. very much. Really Time. appreciate it. Thank you.